Today, I am going to blow your mind with some popular American slang. Boom! So in today's lesson, I'm going to talk to you about some popular and common slang that Americans regularly use. And remember, learning slang, it's mostly important for your listening comprehension. I've had many English learners tell me like, you know, in the classroom, I understand everything. But when I go outside in the streets, or if I'm watching a movie, it's really hard to understand. And that's because people use it informally, casually, in colloquial speech. If you're an English learner, it's not really necessary that you go out and use these words, but it is good for your listening comprehension. So let's talk about some common American slang that Americans love to use, especially me. The first one that I wanna to talk to you about is cool. And no, I'm not talking about the temperature. I'm talking about something or someone that you like. If something or someone is cool, it means that, that you are impressed by this thing or you are impressed by this person. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so cool, so cool, so cool. Very cool guy. So cool. She's the coolest girl in school. So cool. You're so cool. Very cool girlfriend. The coolest. Now, if you are really impressed, then you could say that something is awesome. I use this all the time if I want to express that this is something that I really like, I really enjoy, I'm really impressed with it. I say that it's awesome. Awesome! Awesome? That's awesome! That was so awesome! She thinks you're awesome? Well, I mean, the guy, he's He's awesome. All right, I'm awesome at charades. For example, if you guys hit that like button, that that would be awesome. You guys, you'd, you'd be so cool. Next is the word babe. Now, this is used to refer to a person's loved one, one's girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, and, and you say babe instead of saying their name. I think it's a little more common that, that men use it to refer to their girlfriend or their wife, but it is a gender neutral word. Women do use it when referring to a man as well. Babe, you want some of this coffee? Babe. Hey, babe. Where's my popcorn, babe? What? Who's working for you, babe? Search for you, babe. Be aware, don't just say this to anyone, not to an acquaintance, not to just a friend or a colleague, because it can be very offensive and they might take it the wrong way. Why are you calling them babe? Are you trying to be romantic with them? What's going on? Just don't do it. Now, younger people might not use babe as often. It's a little bit of an older slang term. Instead, they may use bay. And this is an acronym that is short for before anyone else. It's also a word that can refer to your boyfriend or girlfriend, your loved one, someone that you have a romantic relationship with is your bay. This is like a dress rehearsal, bay. Okay. What's up, bay? How's it hanging? <laughs> Next is a slang word that, that I like to use, and maybe I use it a little too much, and that is dude. And this just refers to a, a younger man, a guy, because if somebody says, it's a dude, then they're talking about, well, it's a guy, it's a man. Now, I found a lot of fascinating information about this slang word because it's been around for a long time. And according to the Urban Dictionary, over 100 years ago, the word used to mean a person that, that was very snobbish and stuck up. Then the meaning changed and it referred to a person that moved out west into the countryside and this person just didn't know what the hell they were doing. And the meaning of the word has changed again because today it just refers to a younger man, a guy, a dude. Dude, where's my car? Where's your car, dude? Dude, where's my car? It takes three days to deliver pizza. Hey, dude, how are you? It's probably with a bunch of dudes, like sweating. Dude, what's the rush? There's a dude dressed like a superhero they're fighting a bunch of guys. Next, we have ripped. Most of us would just think of the verb to tear something, but that's not what we're talking about. Instead, we're talking about somebody that is very strong, very muscular. Muscles are, are really well-defined. You would say, that person is ripped. 
For example, I think I'm pretty ripped. Here's a picture of me at the gym. Muscles, very well defined, very strong, ripped. Damn, he's ripped. I'm not kidding, dude, you got ripped. Bro, you are ready for football. This slang word also has another meaning, which is to be intoxicated. If somebody is ripped, then maybe they've been drinking a lot or maybe smoking a little too much. We could say that this person is ripped. If you're talking about somebody who's intoxicated, ripped is not the most common way that somebody would refer to them. Instead, the slang word that they would probably use is this one right here, which is wasted. So if somebody is very, very, very intoxicated, I'm sure you've probably seen somebody who, who fits this description. If somebody's intoxicated, they've been drinking way too much, then they're wasted. We're wasted. You're always wasted. Come on, Chris. Come you're wasted. You're Come absolutely not. wasted. And it was so awesome. Like, like so wasted, man. She already wasted? He's, he's Celebrating. Dead. People say stupid things when they're wasted. Another popular slang word is lit. And no, this is not the past tense of light. It used to mean somebody who was intoxicated. However, that meaning is outdated. People, people don't use it anymore. Nowadays, younger people use lit as an adjective to talk about something that is, that is really awesome, really exciting, or maybe even a person that, that is really cool. So you could say that movie is lit or my best friend, she's lit. Interactive English. English, it's lit. I don't really use this word, so I feel a little strange saying it because I think I'm a little too old to say it. I, it's mostly younger people nowadays. It's gonna be super creepy and scary. That's why it's gonna be lit. And it's gonna be lit. Another slang word that I really like is antsy. And this is an adjective to refer to somebody who is impatient, somebody that just cannot wait any longer. They're, they're ready to do something else. They don't want to sit still anymore. That person is antsy. It, it, it seems like you're, you know, a little antsy. God knows I'm antsy. I know, I know you're antsy. We all are, but you see things they're, they're about to pick up. Another popular slang word and one that is not so good is dis. This is short for disrespect and it means to disrespect someone. So it can be either a verb to dis someone or it could be used as a noun, a dis. But it means to disrespect someone in some way. You say something mean or nasty and you dis someone. We should all be respectful. You shouldn't dis anybody. It's not nice. It's Necessary. Hey! Don't be dissing me! He dissed you bad, G! Why are you two dissing Troy? What? Are you dissing me? Dissing. I don't know what that means. Does that make any sense to you? Next is bromance. And this is just a cute amalgamation of the words bro and romance. And it means love or affection shown between two heterosexual men. So most guys out there, they may be involved in a bromance or maybe they were involved in a bromance at one point or another, but it's when guys, it's nothing sexual and maybe you're gushing over this other person and maybe showing a little too much affection and expressing it and other people see it and they could think, oh, okay, they, they, these guys have a bromance going on. How long has this little uh, bromance been going on? I guess I got caught up in the bromance. It's not quite the bromance. <laughs> the next slang word which you might hear in TV or movies is gaydar. This is another amalgamation between two words and those words are gay and radar. And gaydar is just the ability to tell whether or not somebody is a homosexual. And it's not really used in a derogatory sense at all. It's, it's mostly you'd hear it in conversation if you're talking about some other person and you're trying to think, well, maybe this person's gay, maybe they're not gay. And you talk about that person's ability to tell and you mention somebody's gaydar. My gaydar is never wrong and it is ping him. You gotta be kidding. Mm -mm. I'm here to let you know your gaydar is broken. Mac has the most finely tuned gaydar in the tri-state area. <laughs> If you are in school or when you were in school, I'm sure you came across this word and that is cram. So cram is used as a verb. To cram is 
to try and learn a large amount of information in a very, very, very short period of time. So things that you can cram for, you can cram for an exam, you could cram for a test, cram for a quiz. We've all been there, I think we've all done it. We, we didn't study and we waited until the night before and we have to cram. Thanks mom, sorry I'm cramming for a Spanish exam. Which means I get to cram tomorrow for this test on Monday. No, just try and get ready for exams. I always have to start cramming before everybody else. I made them myself. I've been cramming all night. I hope some of these words were new for you and that the next time you are watching a movie or listening to music, you could try to listen for some of these because again, it's good for your listening comprehension. Now I want to hear from all of you guys. So in the comments, I want you to share with us any slang that, that you know, that you are familiar with. And this could be American slang. It could be British slang, Australian slang. Just write the word, tell us what it means. It's great to be able to expand our list and learn more. Even if you don't know of any slang, we still want to hear from you. Write to us, tell us something that you think is awesome. We just want to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this lesson, please hit that like button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Dude. Americans use it uh, a lot. But <clears throat> now babe is a little bit of an older slang. Ugh. <laughs> I keep like emphasizing all these weird words. All right.